In this video, we're going to look at one of the most powerful pieces of algebra known as the binomial theorem. What the binomial theorem gives us is a really cool, very efficient way to expand binomials, which might not sound super exciting, but believe it or not, uh, this has many applications uh, in future math classes that you may or may not take. In this video, we're going to focus on what the binomial theorem says, and we're going to practice using it. Uh, but real quick before we get there, uh, why do we need uh, a cool, efficient way to expand binomials? And uh, the reason is, is because expanding binomials is a very long, tedious process. Okay, like for example, let's say we wanted to expand uh, x plus 2 to the fifth power. Okay. Uh, first of all, if you're looking at that and you say, oh, that, that's just x to the fifth power plus 2 to the fifth power, I'll tell you right now, that's not even close to uh, the correct expansion of this binomial. If, if you do think that's correct, you should go back and watch one of my other videos called Freshman's Dream, because that's the name given to this mistake. Okay, x plus 2 to the fifth power really means we're multiplying x plus 2 by itself five times. And that is going to be a whole lot of work. It's going to take you a very long time. And there are so many calculations here, your chances of making a mistake, uh, you know, are fairly high. So we would like to do this more efficiently. But uh, let me just show you the amount of work this is. Okay, uh, I'm okay. Uh, hopefully you realize that's not a whole lot of fun. So let's take a look at what binomial theorem tells us and how we can make this a whole lot easier. Okay, so the binomial theorem tells us that if we have a binomial, I'll just call it a plus b, and we raise it to the power n, it is equal to uh, this sum, okay? Uh, the first thing we're looking at is the capital Greek letter sigma. Whenever you see that, that tells you that we're going to be adding some terms together. And if you think about what a polynomial is, it's just a bunch of terms added together, so this sort of makes sense. Okay? And this is our formula for how to compute each of the terms that we're adding together. Uh, A is just the first term of the binomial. We're raising that to the n minus k power. B is the second term of the binomial. We're going to raise that to the k power. And then the coefficients of each term in our expansion are given by uh, this. Okay. Um, we'll talk about this in a second. So first off, on our sum, uh, we have k equals 0 to n. All that means is we're going to start by plugging in 0 for k in the formula and then we're going to plug in 1 and then we're going to plug in 2 and we're going to keep doing that until we get to n. So this is kind of your first value of k and this is your last value of k. That's how you read that. So if I write out the terms, notice for the first term I've replaced k with 0. Uh, the power on a is n minus 0 which is n and then the power on b is 0. Okay, and then for the second term, I'm plugging in 1. For the third term, I'm plugging in 2. Uh, there are a bunch of terms in the middle that I'm skipping for now. And then the last thing I'm going to do is plug in n, which means the power on the first term of binomial is going to be 0. n minus n is 0. And then the power on the second term of the binomial is going to be n. Okay? And then here I tried to write the term that comes before the last term. Okay, before I plug in n, I would plug in 1 less than n. So hopefully you can kind of see that there's a, there's a pattern here. 
Okay. Now, what exactly is this? These are called the binomial coefficients. Numerically, this is computed by taking n factorial divided by the product of n minus k factorial times k factorial. Okay, and we call this the number of combinations of n items chosen k at a time. Okay, and I'm going to show you an example here in a second. But the idea is if we have a group of n items and we're randomly choosing uh, k of them, uh, this number tells me how many different ways that could happen. Okay, so I want to first look at the first and last binomial coefficient. If I'm looking at this, this means I have n objects and I'm choosing zero of them. Okay, And if you think about that, there's really only one way you can choose zero items. You just choose zero items. Okay, So this would be 1. And we also know that b to the 0 power is also equal to 1 because anything to the 0 power is 1. So ultimately, the first term in this expansion is just a to the n power which if you thought about writing a plus b out n times and multiplying, we know that the first term is just going to be a raised to the n power. Okay. Uh, if I fast forward to the last term, again, looking at this number, it means I have n objects and I'm choosing all n of them. Uh, similarly to this one, there's really only one different way you can do that. You just choose all of them. So this is also equal to 1 a to the 0 power is equal to 1, so the last term is ultimately just the second term of the binomial raised to the n power. Okay, So when we expand these binomials, we know what the first term is going to be. We know what the last term is going to be. We only really need to use this formula for the terms that come in between. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second, but let's just think about this idea of a combination. For example, let's say uh, there's a pizzeria that has 20 different toppings to choose from. And let's say you have a coupon for a three-topping pizza. So the question is, how many options do you have if you want to use that coupon and order a three-topping pizza? And the answer to that question is the number of combinations of 20 toppings chosen three at a time, okay? which is uh, similar to the binomial coefficient of 20 items chosen three at a time. Okay, And if you look at the formula I gave you, that's equal to 20 factorial divided by 20 minus 3 factorial, which is 17 factorial, times 3 factorial. Okay, And hopefully you remember what the factorial means, but if not, here we go. Uh, 20 factorial means we take 20 times 19 times 18 all the way down to we get to 1. Okay, 17 is 17 times 16 times 15 all the way down to 1, and 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1. So if we want to find the answer to this problem and figure out how many different options we have for ordering our pizza, we have to simplify this number. And simplifying this number is actually fairly simple. Uh, if you notice here, we have 17 times 16 times 15 all the way down to 1. We also have that up here. This is 17 times 16 times 15 all the way down to 1. So I can cancel those out. Okay, And that's going to leave me with just 20, 19, and 18 as the factors in my numerator. And in the denominator, I'm just left with 3 times 2 times 1. And we can simplify this a little bit more because my denominator is just 6. So if I cancel that out with the 18, that leaves me a factor of 3, giving me 20 times 19 times 3. So believe it or not, the answer is there are 1,140 uh, different combinations here. Uh, in other words, there are 1,140 different three-topping pizzas uh, that we could order from this pizzeria. So that gives you uh, just one of many uh, applications of uh, these binomial coefficients. Okay, uh, For the purpose of this video, we're going to be using these to expand binomials, but this just gives you uh, sort of another idea. Okay, so the first uh, combination we'll try, just for practice, is the number of combinations of eight items chosen three at a time. Okay, So the formula tells us that this is equal to 8 factorial divided by 8 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. Okay? 
So that's the same as 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial, 3 factorial. Okay? Now there's a lot of different ways we can simplify some of these factors, but you want to try to get the most bang for your buck. Uh, you want to take the factorial and the denominator that's the greatest, and we should be able to cancel those out in the numerator right off the bat. Okay? If 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, notice once I got past 8, 7, and 6, I basically listed 5 factorial. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So if I'm going to cancel 5 factorial out, all I'm going to have left in the numerator is 8 times 7 times 6. Okay? The rest of the factors involved in 8 factorial are canceled out with the 5 factorial in the denominator. And now all I have left in my numerator is 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. And if you do these right, you should always be able to cancel out all of the factors in the denominator. Uh, this one's pretty simple. 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. So I can just cancel out the 6, and I'm left with 8 times 7, which is 56. Sometimes you might have to be a little bit more creative, but whatever factors are left in the denominator, uh, you should be able to cancel those out with corresponding factors in the numerator. Okay? So uh, the number of combinations of eight items chosen three at a time is 56. Okay, so let's just look at one more. Uh, the number of combinations of 12 items chosen eight at a time. Again, that means 12 factorial divided by 12 minus 8 factorial, which would be 4 factorial, times 8 factorial. Okay? And we want to simplify this as quick as possible, so I'm going to cancel out the larger factor in the denominator, the 8 factorial. And if I cancel 8 factorial from the numerator, that's going to leave me with the factors 12, 11, 10, and 9. Because again, once I get down to 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, those I've canceled out in the denominator. So in the numerator, I have 12, 11, 10, and 9. And then in the denominator, I'm left with 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? And then again, we want to look to cancel all of these factors. There are many different ways you can do that. Just do whatever you see first. Uh, I'm looking at 4 times 3, that's 12. So I'm going to cancel out the 12 on top and the 4 times 3 in the denominator. And then 2 goes into 10 five times. Okay, So that leaves me with 11 times 5 times 9, which is 495. Okay, So 495 is what we come up with when we simple, simplify uh, this particular combination. Okay? So simplifying these is really not all that difficult. Um, it's actually sort of fun. Okay? And that's basically our first step to using the binomial theorem. Now let's look at a couple examples where we actually expand a binomial. Okay, so for our first example, let's just go back and take a look at the expansion I did by hand the long way. And let's take a look at how the binomial theorem simplifies our work. So again, we're going to look at the binomial x plus 2 and what happens when we raise it to the fifth power. Okay? Um, first off, whatever power we're raising it to in terms of your final answer, uh, that tells you how many terms your polynomial is going to have in the end. And in fact, it's always one additional term to the power. So when I raise this to the fifth power, your final polynomial expansion should have six terms. Okay? If we raise something to the fourth power, you should have five terms, etc. Okay? Because if we're raising this to the fifth power, we're going to have a fifth degree term, a fourth degree, third degree, second degree, first degree, and then the last term is going to be your constant term in this case. Uh, that's why we have six terms total. Now, just by looking at this, you should be able to determine what that first term is going to be and what the last term is going to be. We only really need to use the theorem for those terms that come in the middle. The first term is going to be whatever we get when we multiply x by itself five times. So we know that the first term is going to be x to the fifth power. And similarly, the last term is just going to be the result of taking 2 multiplied by itself five times. So the last term is going to be 2 to the fifth power, uh, which is 32. 
Okay, we're going to use the binomial theorem to find the four terms in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what the theorem tells us for each of these terms and then we'll do all the simplifying because I really want you to see some patterns here. Okay, so if you go back and look at what the theorem says, the second term is going to have a coefficient 5 uh, choose 1 times the first term of the binomial, which in this case is x, raised to the fourth power times the second term of the binomial, which is 2, raised to the first power. Okay. <clears throat> then the next term is going to be 5 choose 2, x to the third power times 2 to the second power. The fourth term is going to be 5 choose 3, x to the second power times 2 to the third power. And then the fifth term is going to be 5 choose 4, x to the first power times 2 to the fourth power. <clears throat> okay? So uh, we know on top we're going to have the fifth power for each one of these, and then we can do 1, 2, 3, and 4 in the middle. Once we get to 5, well, that's the last term, and we already know what the last term is anyway. Okay? Now, uh, we can see the patterns a little bit better if we go ahead and write out uh, what these combinations are. Okay. Remember, 5 choose 1 is 5 factorial over 4 factorial, 1 factorial. Because remember, 5 minus 1 is 4, and that's what we lead with. So what we really have for this second term is this. 5 factorial over 4 factorial times 1 factorial, x to the 4th power times 2 to the 1st power. And if I do the same thing here, I have 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, times x to the 3rd power, times 2 to the 2nd power. Here I have 5 factorial over 2 factorial, 3 factorial, x to the 2nd power, times 2 to the 3rd power. And here I have 5 factorial over 1 factorial, 4 factorial, times x to the 1st power, times 2 to the 4th power. Okay. The reason this is so efficient is because there's a lot of patterns here and not that much we have to remember. So first of all, notice all of these coefficients here. Mm -hmm. Notice that the factorials in the denominator, they add up to 5 every time. 4 and 1, 3 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 4. Okay. Another thing to notice, uh, the power I'm raising each term of the binomial to matches the factorials from the denominator. Okay. My denominator has 4 factorial, 1 factorial. I'm raising x to the 4th power, 2 to the 1st power. Everything matches every single term. Okay? So a couple things. These all add up to 5. And the powers I raise each term to match the factorials from the denominator. And in terms of order, we're just taking the first one down one each time. 4, 3, 2, 1. And then the second one makes up the difference with 5. Okay? The other nice thing about this, some of these are repeats this number is going to be exactly the same as this number and likewise these two are also going to be the same number so really we only have to simplify two things here okay and once we know what number this is this is going to be the same and once we know what number this is this is going to be the same okay so if you understand the pattern and what each term looks like the simplifying is very quick and efficient because a lot of stuff repeats itself Okay, so let's go ahead and finish simplifying this. Okay, so if we simplify this first coefficient, uh, if I cancel out the 4 factorial, I'm only going to be left with 5 on the top, because 5 factorial is 5 times 4, 3, 2, which is basically 4 factorial. And remember, 1 factorial is just 1. So this coefficient is really just the number 5. So what I have here is 5 times x to the 4th times 2 to the 1st power, which is 10x to the fourth. Okay. Now you might even skip down to this one because we know that this coefficient is the same. So this also is 5. So all I have here for this fifth term is 5 times x to the first power times 2 to the fourth power, which is 16. So this term is 80x. Okay. Now let's look at this one. 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial. I'm going to cancel out 3 factorial. That's going to leave me with 5 times 4 in the numerator. 
because the 3, 2, 1 is going to cancel, and then I'm left with 2 times 1 in the denominator. That's 20 divided by 2, which is 10. Okay? So really what I have here is 10 times x to the third power times 4. 2 squared is 4. So this term is 40x cubed. Okay? And if this was 10, that means this is also 10. So here I have 10 times x squared times 2 to the third power, which is 8, and that gives me 80x squared. Okay? And we have all the terms of our answer, uh, and you know, we got there a whole lot quicker than what I did before. So what we have here as a final result, x plus 2 to the fifth power is x to the fifth power plus 10x to the fourth power plus 40x to the third power plus 80x squared plus 80x. I'm kind of running out of room here, but that's okay. Plus 32. And that is my expansion of x plus 2 to the fifth power. Uh, notice this all works out in descending order. We have one term of every degree from 5 all the way down to my constant term of 32. And that will always be the case as long as uh, this is a linear term. You know, if this was x squared or x cubed as a first term, then your powers uh, are going to look a little bit different. But if we're talking about a linear binomial raised to a power, uh, this is basically what you're going to see. Okay, let's look at one more. Okay, so let's take a look at 2x minus 3 raised to the sixth power. Okay, our polynomial expansion here, uh, we should end up with seven terms. Uh, so again, uh, like we said before, you might do the first and last term uh, to get those out of the way. We know that the first term is going to be 2x raised to the sixth power, and that's going to be 64x to the sixth power. Okay, and that's what the first term is going to be. And then the last term is going to be negative 3 raised to the 6th power, uh, which is going to be a positive 486. So that's going to be the last term of my expansion. Okay? And for the terms in the middle, I'm going to use the binomial theorem. I'm going to go ahead and write those coefficients out in their factorial form, just to save a little bit of time. Um, my, my second term is going to be 6 factorial over 5 factorial, 1 factorial. Remember, if we're raising this to the 6th power, uh, my numerator is going to be 6 factorial for all of these binomial coefficients, and uh, the factorials in the denominator are always going to add up to 6. So for the second term, we're going to have 5 and 1, and then I'm going to raise 2x to the 5th power, and then I'm going to raise negative 3 to the 1st power. Remember, the powers we raise each term to are going to match the factorials from the denominator. Do not forget your negative signs if this is a difference. Okay? Some of these terms are going to end up positive and some of them are going to be negative, unlike the first example we did where everything was positive. So you can't leave that sign out. My next term would be 6 factorial over 4 factorial, 2 factorial. And then I'm going to raise 2x to the fourth power and then I'm going to raise negative 3 to the second power. Are you starting to see the pattern? I hope you're starting to see the pattern. If not, we'll keep going. The next one would be 6 factorial. I keep taking this down one. I had 5, I had 4. Now I'm going to have 3 factorial, 3 factorial, because 3 plus 3 is 6. And then I'm going to raise 2x to the third power, and I'm going to raise negative 3 to the third power. Then I'm going to have 6 factorial over 2 factorial, 4 factorial. I'm going to raise 2x to the second power. I'm going to raise negative 3 to the fourth power. And then the sixth term is going to be 6 factorial over 1 factorial, 5 factorial. I'm going to raise 2x to the first power times negative 3 to the fifth power. Okay. So I really, at this point, we really need to understand the pattern so we don't have to keep looking at the theorem over and over again. And ultimately, you really don't even need to memorize the theorem if you understand the pattern. So if you're not there yet, feel free to hit pause and, and really look at this. And really, all we have to do now is simplify these uh, five terms, okay, 
And that's going to be save us a whole lot of time as opposed to writing this down six times and multiplying all those terms out, combining like terms, etc. Okay, so let's try this. Uh, I'm going to cancel out the, the largest factorial from the denominator. That's going to leave me with 6 here, okay, because the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is going to cancel when I, when I cancel it from the 6 factorial. So I'm going to have 6 times this. 2x raised to the fifth power is 32x to the fifth power, and negative 3 to the first power is negative 3. 6 times 32 times negative 3 is negative 576 x to the fifth power. So that is the second term of my expansion. Okay? I'm also going to make a note that when I get down here, uh, this is also just going to be equal to 6. Okay? Because this coefficient is the same as this one. Alright, let's do the third term. I'm going to cancel out the 4 factorial. That's going to leave me with 6 times 5 on the top. And then on the bottom, I have 2. Okay, uh, This is 30 over 2, so this is actually just 15. So I'm going to replace that with 15. So I have 15. 2x to the fourth power is 16x to the fourth power. And negative 3 squared is positive 9. Okay. So if I multiply 15 times 16x to the fourth times 9, I get 2,160 x to the fourth power. And that one's going to be positive. Okay, notice I have a positive term, and then I got a negative term, and then I got a positive term. These are going to all alternate. Wherever negative 3 is raised to an even power, these terms are going to be positive. Wherever negative 3 is raised to an odd power, those terms are going to be negative. Okay, this one, 6 factorial over 3 factorial, 3 factorial. I'm going to cancel out one of the 3 factorials. That'll leave me with 6, 5, 4. And then on the bottom, I have 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6, so this is just going to be 20. Okay? So I have 20 times 2x cubed, which is 8x cubed, times negative 3 cubed, which is negative 27. So this term is going to be, it's going to be negative 4,320x to the third power. Okay, this coefficient is the same as this one, and we said that was 15. So this term is going to be 15 times 4x squared times negative 3 to the fourth power, which is positive 81. Positive 4,860x squared. And then I just have one more. Uh, this coefficient was the same as this one, so it's 6 times 2x times negative 3 to the fifth power, which is negative 243, uh, that's going to be negative 2,916x. Okay. And at this point, we have the expansion. Uh, if I write out these terms, I'm going to have 64x to the sixth power minus 576x to the fifth power plus 2,160x to the fourth power minus 4,320x to the third power plus 4,860x to the second power minus 2,916x plus 486. So that is my polynomial expansion of the binomial 2x minus 3 raised to the 6th power. I really want you to imagine doing that the long way without using binomial theorem. Okay, hopefully uh, you realize that this is a much quicker, uh, more efficient, and frankly more fun way to expand binomials. Alright, so before this ends, uh, I want you to go ahead and try one. I want you to expand 3x minus 1 to the 5th power using the binomial theorem. Uh, go ahead and hit pause now, uh, give this a try, and then when you think you've got it done, you can hit play, and I will reveal the answer.